Hey, it's Matt with Meat Church. Let's make carnitas. Well, tacos are a way of life for my family and for most Texans and probably for a lot of y'all. We have tons of videos on this channel when it comes to tacos, tons of recipes on meatchurch.com. We've got barbacoa, uh, we've got a beef rib taco, we've got fajitas, we've got our Mexican pulled pork Mexican brisket, we've got our bacon brisket served in as a taco. So many different variations of tacos that we have in our taco playlist, but today I'm gonna teach you guys to cook like a Texan. We're gonna make carnitas. Uh, yes, I'm not Hispanic, um, but my gringo taco game I think is pretty strong. So my buddy Gio down the road that owns Taco Suave in Waxahachie has helped me develop my technique over time and what I like to do. But with all recipes, there's a super authentic way to make things and then there's your way, whatever you like. As long as you like the end result, that's all that matters. But what are carnitas? Well, it translates to little meats, but it's basically pork that comes from a boneless pork butt and it's simmered uh, in oil or Monteca lard in this case. And we're gonna simmer it, we're ultimately braising it, um, and then we're gonna crisp them up at the end. So when we dropped our Mexican pulled pork video, a lot of people said, that's not real Mexican. I know it's not Mexican, I said that in the video. A lot of people also said it's carnitas. It is definitely not carnitas at all. But this technique um, is going to be uh, a more traditional way, except I'm always gonna add a smoke element. So let's overview what we're gonna do. What I've got here is half of an eight pound pork butt. So this is just a prairie fresh pork butt. Boneless works the best so that you don't have to deal uh, with the bone in it. And all we're gonna do is cut this up into pretty big cubes. We're gonna season it. Then what we're gonna do over here on this live fire is we're going to simmer it uh, in this lard or manteca that I got at my uh, local Super Garcia. Uh, we're gonna simmer it for a few minutes. Then we're actually gonna put it over in the smoker. And so for my braise, I'm gonna put it in the smoker. Don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. We'll cover it at the end. It's gonna be nice and tender. We're gonna slightly pull it apart, not like pulled pork. We're gonna to start to pull it and we're gonna put it back in the pit out of all that liquid and we're gonna crisp it up and it's gonna make what my wife says are the best tacos that we make. So let's jump into this. First things first. Gotta heat this up because we're gonna simmer in the lard. So I've got my mill scale yakitori going over here. Got a little live fire going. Don't ask me how hot it is because I don't really know. It's just, it's just over a fire. And how much of this do you need? Well, just depends how big your vessel is. Because I don't want to cover the meat. I want to go about maybe halfway up the meat. All right. While that is heating up, we're going to take our pork butt and we're going to cut it up. You can see I've got two big pieces here. Uh, like I said, this is just about right at half. It is half, it's four pounds. And this makes enough for my family and we'll have a little bit of leftovers as well. And what you wanna do is you want some pretty big pieces. So two inch cubes or so is kind of what you're looking for. I'm not trimming the fat off. I want that fat to render down and help make this even more delicious. All right, now we need a little bit of seasoning. So when I can, I love to use my products. Uh, my fajita seasoning is one of my favorite products, Dia de la Fajita. Uh, if you're not familiar with this product, the make of it is salt, pepper, garlic, onion, a little bit of citrus. And then we're gonna add a little bit of comino to it as well to really give us a little more Southwestern flair. Some people like to make a seasoning but the great thing about Meat Church is I make it for you so that you don't have to. All we're gonna do is just keep kind of tossing this around, season it up, and then we're gonna drop it in to fry. Well, our oil, as you can hear, is clearly nice and hot. So I'm gonna just drop these pieces right in. 
So the goal is you're gonna simmer this in that fat. So I don't wanna completely submerge it. And then after we simmer, we're gonna simmer probably two, three minutes, flip it over, go two, three more minutes, or just kind of to your liking. So from here, you know, you're taking a piece of meat that's like probably 40 degrees. You're ultimately gonna try to take it to tender, which is close to 200. So you have to decide at every step, how long do you wanna simmer? How long do you wanna braise? Till we shred it and then crisp it up at the end. So kind of up to you. But in the pot we go. All right, I'm not gonna drop all that in because I don't wanna completely overcrowd it. By the way, this is a number 12 Dutch oven. For those of you that are gonna ask, it's vintage. It's probably, I think it's about 60 years old and I love to cook with it outside. So again, we're gonna simmer this for a couple minutes. I'm gonna flip it over, simmer you know, a couple, three minutes on the other side and then we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, we've been simmering, I don't know, six, seven, eight minutes. A lot of people would just simmer this all the way through. But again, we're gonna throw it in the smoker a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it off the fire. Like I said, we could just simmer this in this until it's basically tender and then we go to crisp it. But I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit. So let's, let's get an orange here. I like to put a little orange juice in it. Little citrus, be careful with the hot oil. I'm gonna put a couple of these in, only, only two. I'm gonna squeeze the juice of two whole oranges, but I'm only gonna actually put two in my pot. Do what you want. Mexican Coke, y'all know, it seems like we've been on a kick lately between the real Dr. Pepper and the real Coke. But not only is this great to to drink with it at the end, which is a must in Texas. But I see a lot of people and know a lot of friends, a lot of friends from, from Rio Grande Valley like to braise and coke. It adds a nice sweetness. Uh, depending on the size of your pot, I would go full 12 ounce bottle, but I don't wanna completely cover all of this up. Um, I'm gonna grab a couple onions as well. So this is, a, this is a quartered onion, so half an onion. When I do barbacoa or carnitas, I love onions, sometimes garlic. I'm not putting garlic in today. You can add more, it's not gonna hurt it, kinda just to your preference. And then I think bay leaf adds a nice element, so I'm going with a couple of those. Now, I'm going to smoke this open. A lot of variation here, the temperature. We're going over here to our mill scale offset. We're running 250 degrees, but this part is just about how much smoke do you wanna put on the meat that's coming out of the oil. So you can be 250, you can be 350. Um, this won't take long. I wanna, I'm basically at this stage, I wanna get this to again around 195. So at some point I'll cover it to braise, but for now, I'm just gonna pick this up and put it in my pit closer up to my fire so that this can keep going. Uh, it will continue to get tender, it'll get a little smoke element and we'll see y'all back uh, when we're gonna cover it up. All right, so we've been cooking almost two hours. Ooh, and you can see it has like beautiful brown color. Um, again, this part is just, if you're gunning 250, you can go 325, 350, whatever you wanna do. But the lower you go, the more smoke you can get on, the longer you can prolong this stage. So let's just temp a piece right here in the middle. So, you know, about 170. I say you gotta go to at least 165, but take it as far as you want, 175, whatever. All we're gonna do from here is we're gonna cover it up to braise. I'm gonna move it a little closer to the fire and I'm gonna run my fire up a little over 300 because honestly, I'm starving. So I just need to get this to tender and it'll be time to crisp it up. 
Well, we've been brazing for just over an hour and a half or so. Again, you just want to do it to 195, which is probe tender, so that we can pull it. I've also got another Dutch oven going in here with some more lard in it that I'm going to dip my tortillas in. Oh, that looks super good. Okay. So I've already checked this with an instant read thermometer, uh, but when you do, you would see that this is just like really probe tender. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all these pieces up on here and I'm not gonna pull it like pulled pork. I'm just gonna slightly break it apart like that. And I'm gonna do that with this entire pot. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the lard on the bottom of this. I'm gonna run my fire up to about 350 on the smoker and I'm gonna put this pan in right by the firebox to crisp it up, tossing it one or two times. If you do this in an oven, I'd go up to 400 degrees, crisp it a lot quicker. Uh, but since I'm going in the smoker, I'm gonna go 350 in this. If you're in a pellet grill, like I say, run, run it up to 400 for this last step. But let me get this pulled apart. All right, that's nice and spread apart. Uh, and you can see it might be a little tough on camera, but the benefit of being in the smoker, it's got some nice smoke in it there. And the benefit of being the cook, you can eat now, that's really good already. All right, I'm gonna put some of this residual lard onto this pan. All right, I've got to go run the fire up uh, to get my temperature over 350. And when I get there, we're gonna put this in. All right, we've got our fire where it needs to be. I'm gonna put these close to the firebox. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably toss them one or two times just to try to get kind of crispy bits all over it is what we're looking for. While the carnitas are crisping, let's go ahead and get our tortillas ready. So my same buddy, Gio, over at Taco Suave, he's from the RGV, which is, you know, I think the taco capital of the world. Uh, these are fresh corn tortillas from him. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab lard that we've heated up, we're gonna dip these in that lard and we're gonna throw them on plancha. That's really gonna add a really um, kind of robust element to the taco that I think is totally necessary. So we've just been heating it up on the smoker. I'm gonna dip them in here, throw them on dry plancha over the hot fire. All right, these have been cooking, I don't know, two minutes. I don't time much. I pull these off. I got a lot of people in line to eat these today. A lot of people are excited about carnitas today, so I'm gonna keep making tortillas. Well, we've been in the pit for just about 20 minutes and about halfway through, I flipped the pork around just a little bit, just kind of moved it, but it's on a cast iron skillet, which is the way I like to do it. So should be great. It's not the easiest thing to move. They look amazing. So clearly you can see that uh, they crisped up, which is what I was looking for the key part of carnitas to me. So obviously these are gonna be uh, nuclear, so I'm gonna get myself something to drink while these cool off and then we're gonna make tacos. Today's drink of choice is gonna be a ranch water, super easy to make. Topo Chico, I use one with lime. A little bit of Dos Primos tequila. The lime. Mix it up. <sighs> Tastes like Texas. All right, I'm excited these have cooled off. Uh, we've got our tortillas here. I'm super simple. Uh, I think you would consider this traditional. For me, I, I don't need anything but cilantro and onions on mine. And for those of you that think that cilantro tastes like dish soap, I feel bad for you because it doesn't. Here we go. Mm. 
I ain't mad at it. I love it. Yes, it's crisp, but it's still super juicy inside. And doing the tortillas this way adds such a big element. You don't need anything. You can add hot sauce if you want. You know, we do some stuff like that, but you know, Saturday mornings when I'm eating tacos, uh, I just like cilantro and onions. It's that simple for me. You guys have to make this. I told you it's gonna go in the taco playlist. Like and subscribe. Your subscriptions help us keep bringing you these free how-to cooking videos. We'll see y'all next week. Welcome to the wrap up. You know, I think the only thing that I would have mentioned in the video was I took probably the largest bite I've ever taken. And so uh, kind of got off track of explaining all the flavors I tasted and, and just how great these carnitas were. Probably the best taco that I feel like I've made maybe ever. So I think very authentic with my smoke twist on it. But that pork braising in the lard, I mean, it just adds such a depth of flavor that is what you love if you love what I'll call street tacos. Um, and you know, and I ate it with uh, cilantro and onions, but I kept talking about my man Gio at Taco Suave. This is his Falsa Salsa, which I actually love on them as well. But you guys have to make this. It comes together really quickly. This is something that doesn't take all day. A lot of our low and slow barbecue stuff is an all day thing. This is something um, that you can actually get done in a reasonable amount of time. So like and subscribe, make this. Let us know in the comments what you think. See y'all next time. Thank you.